Okay, it's working. <clears throat> so, tonight, um, I want to talk about weight loss. I want to talk about my personal journey with weight loss. Um, and as the title suggests, I actually have lost from the very worst to the very best uh, times uh, the total of 52 pounds. And I'm going to tell you how I did it. Hopefully, uh, some of it may turn out to be helpful to you if weight loss is something that you're after. All the noise around me is the insects in my backyard. So, if they interfere with the audio, there's nothing I can do about it. I'm smoking my Friday night pipe and I'm not going inside with it. So, anyway, I think uh, it's high time I showed you the before and after picture. So, here we come. This is the before and after. Now the before on the left is me in uh, 2005. In fact, that wasn't the fattest uh, that I've been. Um, in 2006, roughly about one year after this picture was taken, I was even bigger than what you're seeing right now. What you're seeing is about two, 210 pounds to 212. I actually registered, the highest weight that I registered on the scale in the doctor's office in 2006 was 228. That's how bad it was, okay? And on the right is me today, literally today. I took this picture today. So let me tell you how I got from there to here. Well, maybe I should start with how I got there. Um, I was never really skinny. But I wasn't really fat. I wasn't really like completely overweight either. I was a little bit on the heavy side, but I, nobody would accuse me of being fat. But nobody ever, ever in their wildest dreams could accuse me of being skinny. Um, so I started gaining weight somewhere around year 2000. And I'm not sure what happened. One theory is uh, that that was because I got married that year, which is true, I did. But uh, I'm not sure that that was the, the factor. In fact, before we got married, I was already noticing that I was gaining weight. Um, I have a theory that I think is a little more plausible as to why I started gaining weight around that time. Uh, in 1999, I was working as a translator uh, with an American company that was building a factory uh, right outside St. Petersburg in Russia, which is where I was living at the time. And um, so, yeah, there, there were American and British engineers putting together like production line, bringing in equipment, installing it, and all that out in the field. Uh, in a concrete box um, near St. Petersburg. And I worked there for almost six months, which included the entire summer. And the summer, I remember, is being very hot. So I was constantly thirsty. It was hot, it was stuffy, it was dusty in that concrete building and outside. And... But what happened at one point was they installed the Coca-Cola vending machines, and I just went at it. And I was so stupid, I can't believe how stupid I was. I was drinking the stuff by the gallon, almost literally. In fact, I would I would easily drink like two liters of Coke a day. Now that I you know that I think back to that and think of all the sugar I was taking in, I'm you know it just makes me cringe. But okay, that's that's what happened. So I did that for like for for many weeks. I think I whacked. I, I think I wrecked my metabolism that summer pretty badly. I don't believe that something like that, such sugar intake, can, you know, just be without consequence. So, anyway, uh, so in, in the year 2000, I started gaining weight, and I continued to gain weight year after year after year, until eventually I was about 210 pounds. And uh, um, a friend of mine introduced me to a diet, because I was, I was getting serious about, oh no, it wasn't a friend of mine, I actually ran uh, into a book. And I read it, and I liked it, and I decided to give it a try. Um, it was right around, oh yeah, it was April 2004. In fact, it was the exact week my father died um, that I somehow found this book. I, I, I forget where I got it from. I think I bought it in the bookstore. Uh, picked it up, and I read a few pages, and I decided I was going to give it a try. So I started that week after my dad was buried. Um, and it, it, it actually brought about some results. I, I started losing some weight, not very quickly. 
Um, I don't think I had a... No, I didn't have a scale in my apartment then. But I was going to the gym almost every day, at least five, five times a week. And there was a scale there, and I was trying to monitor my weight then and there. And I, I lost a few pounds. Um, but So the Montagnac diet, you know, for simplicity's sake, let's say it's just very close to South Beach diet. So you, you eliminate like bad carbs, foods with high glycemic index, uh, like white bread and starchy things like potatoes and pasta and bananas. And, but you can eat vegetables, fruits, um, dark breads like the pumpernickels and stuff. Um, like good grains, like, I don't know, oatmeal, or whatever. Um, so you're watching the sugar, the direct intake of sugar, and also the, uh, the, the high glycemic index carbs. Um, and that was it. You're, you're not supposed to count any calories. In fact, I've come to believe over the course of these, you know, six, seven years that I've been fighting my extra weight, that calorie, caloric intake accounting and calories, in principle, are a useless abstraction. In fact, it's not only useless, it's harmful because it misleads you into thinking you're doing something significant when, in fact, you're not. Um, a bit on calories. Calorie is a measure of energy. It doesn't exist. It's just how, you, how we think of the amounts of energy, right? It's not a physical thing that exists. You know, there are no round cal calories or square calories or whatever. But... Again, a measure of energy is an abstraction. Imagine a car, right, um, with a gas tank and an internal combustion engine. And imagine, I don't know, a gallon of gas and a big lump of coal. Well, theoretically, this lump of coal may contain the exact same number of calories, as in, you know, the kind of energy, the amount of energy you can get out of it if you burn it, as the gallon of gasoline. But if you put coal into the gas tank of your car, you're not going to get very far because the engine does not know how to use that energy. It can't process, can't metabolize that energy. So to me, it's much more about metabolism and the chemistry of what goes on in your body than it is about calories. Again, to me, calories completely, they don't exist. I don't never count them. Uh, and, you know, I've, I've been on three diets, two of which have performed spectacularly well for me. None of them recommend counting calories. Um, none of them, in, 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 in none of them do calories even factor in as, as anything significant. It's just, you know, you eat, the quantity of what you eat is not limited by any of those three diets. And again, they've done, they've done a great job for me, as hopefully you've seen in the picture. Um, so, going on, um, moving on. Yeah, so I, I, I lost a little bit of weight. And then I hit a plateau. Um, I hit a plateau. I think the plat it, it was a plateau that was the 210 pounds that I could not move past. And I, you know, no matter what I did, I did gym seven days a week um, for about an hour, out of which 40, 45 minutes was like intense cardio, uh, like really exhausting cardio. Um, because at the time, I believed that cardio, where you get your heart rate up to a certain level and keep it up there for a long period of time, is what it takes to burn the energy and um, uh, lose weight. It wasn't working. I just hit that plateau. I couldn't break through it for the life of me. I didn't know what to do. And I was sort of losing interest because, uh, you know, you invest all this energy and dedication and you, you work yourself so hard for no result, you lose motivation. Um, and then a friend of mine, that was a friend of mine that I was thinking about before, he said, well, why don't you try something a little more radical? So what is it? He said, well, uh, it's not just the quality of carbs, like you eliminate the bad carbs and keep the good carbs. It's the quantity of carbs altogether. You want to cut them out. You want to cut them to under 10 grams a day for at least a period of time and see what that gets you. He said, that's called Atkins. I'm like, I know lots of people have a problem with Atkins. Fine, whatever. Um, doesn't matter to me because I know what it did for me. Okay. Um, so, and that was what I did. Now, uh, that was in 2007. Now, I, I showed you the picture before. That was me in 2005. I, I think I said before also that uh, a year after that, uh, in 2006, I was even heavier. I was at 228. So in, 2000, uh, in 2006, I started losing weight. After having gone to a doctor one time, he said, look, uh, man, you need to lose some weight. 
So I started doing the Montagnac diet again, South Beach diet. Uh, brought it down to about 212, hit a plateau. And then, I st and then in 2007, my wife went to Russia for most of the summer, for two and a half months. She was gone with both of our kids. And, uh, and I was alone in our apartment in, in Boston. And I decided to do something about this weight thing. And uh, I went Atkins full bore for almost the entire summer. So I cut everything. I was reading the labels religiously looking for carbs. I was under 10 grams a day literally for like three months. Um, I was watching my ketone levels. There was ways to do that. I was taking vitamin supplements. I was being careful, but I was really dedicated. I wanted to lose that goddamn weight. Also, what I added was I added a, uh, an hour of fast walk a day. I don't run. I, I don't like running. I don't do it very well. I, you know, uh, but fast walking um, is what I did for at least an hour every day. In the morning, I would get up at around 6, and from 6 to 7, I, I would do the, the walk. I would come back. My heart rate would be at around 145. I would get drenched in sweat. Um, and then I would, you know, to, Take a shower, have breakfast, bacon and eggs. Every morning, bacon and eggs. Every damn morning, bacon and eggs. I lost a shitload of pounds that way, by the way. Um, and then I would go to work. So I did that for much of the summer. And I lost, I don't know how, I, 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 don't, I still, I don't think it's, you know, I, 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 don't, I had a scale in my house. I must have had a scale in it. How else would I monitor my weight? Anyway. I don't remember the numbers, uh, but I think I think I was like in mid 180. Um, so I slimmed down considerably. Okay, and when I went to the Logan Airport to pick up my wife coming back from Russia with her kids, she 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 was shocked. She uh, she couldn't believe it. I I really really slimmed down quite a bit, and then there were some changes in our life because I was changing jobs. I took an offer to you know to go and Take a new job in New York City, so we were moving from Massachusetts. It was a very stressful couple of weeks. We we're packing, preparing to move, and then we moved to New Jersey. And finally, when we settled into our new house in New Jersey, it wasn't our house; it was a rented house. Um, and I you know, stepped on the scale one morning, and I was shocked to see that I was at 179. I had lost an extra few pounds, and all the stress of moving. I, I think that was. Uh, what was to blame for, for the extra weight loss. So I was at 179, and that was my high point. Because for a very, very long time, I could not break through that. I could not even get close to that figure. So I continued on Atkins. I was um, under 20, 25 grams a day of carbs. I did gym religiously every day for an hour. Again, uh, 40 to 45 minutes of cardio. Um, some squats with weights, uh, some chin-ups, stuff like that, for an hour every day. And even when I traveled, I my, my travel consisted of in, uh, um, flights to Moscow. Uh, they would put me up at a hotel in Moscow. I would insist on a hotel with a gym, and I would go to the gym, and I'd run up and down the stairs, just exercising, exercising, exercising. I really wanted to keep it up. I did a lot of push-ups and stuff. Um... So yeah, I, and I think I remained roughly around that level, 179, but I never went any lower than that. I don't think I gained much weight. No, pro probably just stayed around 179, 180. Oh, excuse me. Oh. So, and then what happened was I changed jobs again, and again, the life became sort of stressful in a new way. I started traveling much more. Suddenly, I was spending 35% of my time away from home, mostly flying to London, uh, and to Moscow some, so it was kind of stressful, and I deliberately sort of abandoned the strict diet. I, I deliberately let myself go time and time again, um, and I ate, like, really bad stuff, like, you know, sweet stuff, and cake, and, like, I would, none, you know, not skip potatoes now if they came with my steak at a restaurant and stuff like that, and I noticed that I was gaining, gaining some of the weight back, but I wasn't too worried about it. I was telling myself, look, you know, you, you lost... Um, what was it, uh, 49 pounds, it's great, you know, you're going to allow yourself to, you're going to afford to gain some of it back. Little by little, I gained quite a bit of it back. 
I think, well, at around 2010, I think I was, I was again butting up against uh, 200 pounds, which was frustrating because I had bought new clothes and, you know, um, at, 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 the, at, the, at the peak, so to speak, um, I was able to wear like 32 inch waist pants. Now those were out of the question. And 33 were really kind of tight. And 33 is a, is a weird size. They're not always able to get it. So 34 was the sort of the fallback. And that was frustrating. But I was telling myself, well, at least it's not 36 and 38 that I used to wear. Because those are gone. I, I threw them away. Um, just to, to, to burn the bridges. I was not going back to 36, let alone 38. So uh, my weight hovered around like 195 to 100 to 200 pounds and then come early 2011 I decided to maybe exercise I wasn't gonna go to the gym anymore but I got myself a kettlebell well just because I got myself a kettlebell it doesn't mean I started exercising but I got it and then I, I set it on the floor in my office where I exercised and that was it for a while occasionally I would pick it up and do something with it. and I looked up some exercises on YouTube which you can do too. So I did those for a while, but then, you know, one business trip, another business trip, something else, and another distraction, and that got abandoned as well for a while. So um, as I was sitting, and, and again, my weight was around 195 to 198, hovering around that area. So uh, in the beginning of 2012, or rather December 31st, 2011, I was writing down my New Year's resolution. And one of the resolutions was I was gonna, I was gonna try and do something about my weight by way of exercising. Now, mind you, I was still on a you know quasi Atkins diet. I, I I really was watching very carefully what I ate. I was watching the carbs, not really counting the carbs, but I was mindful uh, of the carbs that I took in. I still I didn't, and I still don't eat any sweet foods, anything sugar anything starch and you know nothing like that no pasta no nothing well the, the worst that i would do you know is some occasional helping of hummus um you know maybe some some like tomatoes those have sugar too no you know like maybe one glass of orange juice a quarter or something you know uh when i'm on an airplane uh on a transatlantic flight i'll have myself a, a glass of orange juice because it tastes so damn good and I really want it. And airplanes are horrible. It's very difficult to keep <laughs> with your diet, uh, um, you know, on an airplane because suddenly you get hungry and uh, it's just weird. Anyway, so I was on, I was on this diet all this time. I was watching very very closely what I ate, and nothing happened. I couldn't move that needle. Well, my scale doesn't have a needle. It's a digital readout scale, but moving needle sounds better than moving those digits. Um, so yeah, the needle was moving. I was still, I was stuck at around 195 or, you know, to, to 198 to, I, I never hit 200, you know, that, that would have been scary and very frustrating, but it was just barely below that. So I decided to do something that I hadn't done before. Like, uh, and I read, uh, in a number of places I'd read about, uh, like resistance training and the virtue of resistance training, which means training with weights. And also interval training, and the combination of the two, uh, the the advantages of that for weight loss as opposed to your typical cardio. And the theory behind it is that uh, you know, look, if you if you look at a sprinter, right, and if you look at a, at a sprinter and a marathon runner, who's more fit? Mostly sprinters. Sprinters are are buffed, completely buffed. They're ripped. Marathon runners are like like this um, so because in nature we move in violent very intense but short spurts we are not built we're designed to run slowly for a very long period of time we move quickly for a short period of time then we rest then we move quickly again I don't know if it has any merit but it sounded interesting so I decided to give it a try and uh, yeah so I started exercising with my kettlebell doing a routine I'm now at 12 minutes a day uh, which I do almost every day. Sometimes when I do like heavy physical work, like heavy yard work, carrying stones or like bags of mulch and stuff where I'm exhausted, uh, I allow myself to skip 
but basically I do it every day. And I started out uh, with just the three minutes um, of interval training with the kettlebell, and I built it up slowly to four, five, six, and eventually 12. I do it with a couple of short breaks, and I'll tell you more about that, but kettlebell is pretty interesting. Um, kettlebell is an inherently unstable object, right? So when you swing it back and forth, up and down, your entire body, mostly your arms and your core, participate in the in the stabilizing, you know, getting it going and then stopping it and stabilizing the kettlebell. Um, and it works your it works your body pretty damn pretty damn hard. I when I do my 12 minute routine with a kettlebell, after I'm done, even if I'm in a cold basement and my basement has a separate air conditioner, and sometimes I turn it, you know, like I turn it to like dehumidifier because uh, the humidity gets too high and it gets freezing in there. Even when it's freezing, when I'm done with my 12 minute routine, I'm drenched in sweat as if I just stepped out of the shower. Literally, I'm dripping with sweat, like uh, from my forehead, the, you know, the, the droplets of sweat get into my eyes, I can't see, it's dripping off my body onto the floor, I'm literally drenched. Um, the theory again behind it is that you get your, and when I finish, my heart rate is, is like, it used to be like 175, which is really, really high for me. Um, it's now closer to 160, 165, which I think is a good sign because I've, I've, I've probably trained my heart and my cardiovascular system to adapt more quickly. So instead of having it at 175 after, say, I don't know, nine minutes of workout, I am now at 160 after 12 minutes of exertion, so that's great. Um, and the interval training consists in doing, well, in my case, it's a Tabata interval, so it's a so-called Tabata interval, where I do t 20 seconds of intense exercise, followed by 10 seconds of rest. Again, 20 seconds of intense exercise, 10 seconds of rest. And I do that for six minutes. Um, again, after six minutes, I'm breathing heavily, my heart rate's way up, I'm working hard, I give myself an extra 30 seconds break, then I do another four minutes, and I do another 30 seconds break, and I, I follow up by a minute of, you know, that minute includes, you know, one of the harder exercises where I squat with the kettlebell. Now, the kettlebell is 35 pounds, 16 kilos, which is standard weight for a Russian kettlebell. Um, so, you know, the, the somehow the most difficult, maybe it's the most difficult exercise because I do it at the very end, but it's, it's kind of taxing where you hold the kettlebell like this in front of you and then you squat, keeping your back straight and your your abs and your back and your legs and, and even your arms just from, from holding it in front of you just get numb. You do that for 20 seconds, you feel that, like you're working hard. Anyway, so I do the 12-minute routine every day, built up from like 3 minutes over time to, to 12. So that was what I was doing differently, and I was trying to do it kind of religiously, really. I, you know, uh, apart from my business trips, I do it every day when I'm at home, and my weight started going down. I saw, you know, I, I went on a on an overseas trip in like mid February. I came back. I was at 198, which was a little more than when I left out. When I left out, I think it was like 194, 195. So 198, but. Three weeks later, I was at 191, 191, and then 190, and then 189, and I was feeling really good, but I, I really wanted to hit the 179, like my low, well, probably high point, from the standpoint of fitness, um, and I wasn't sure that I was going to get there. I wasn't even sure that it was possible, but I continued on because I could feel, I felt better. My, my core muscles were finally developing, my, you know, I could feel my back muscles building up, I you know, the upper body right here. I never had muscles over here. Never, ever had any muscles over here. It's no lats. I'm not very good with anatomy. Um, and my upper body. Oh, oh and uh, I have a bar for, like, chin-ups. The best that I could do in the beginning of the year was, like, maybe four. If I really, really, really try very hard, maybe five on a good day, I can now do 12. I could never do 12, never ever before in my entire life, not in high school, no, not ever. So, um, so I, you know, I was continuing with the kettlebell, the weight loss was happening little by little, like pound by pound, and I finally got like below 190, eventually to like 186, 
185, and I'm like, whoa, I'm, I'm at 185, I'm cool, but can I do more? And then a friend of mine introduced me to yet another diet. Um, it's called the Dukan diet, D-U-K-A-N. It's again a French diet. Dukan is a French dietologist. And a friend of mine, like she, you know, I'm, I'm talking about the wife of a very close friend. Um, she said, well, I tried this thing and it's beautiful because you don't have to like permanently cut out any food groups really. You could you know, eventually, after you're done with it, you can eat whatever you want in moderation, you know, judiciously, but there are no forbidden foods. And for me, I've, I've, long come to terms with the fact that there are certain foods that I'm never going to enjoy, at least not very much, not not very, very often. Like, for example, potatoes are a no-no. I used to love potatoes. No, no. Cakes, like don't, donuts, Dunkin' Donuts, oh my god. So those are gone, and I'm kind of fine with that. Um, it was more difficult in the beginning. It's no longer difficult. Um... But, so I wasn't interested in that promise that you, oh you eventually you can eat whatever you want no I was interested in, in doing something that I haven't done before uh, and hoping for a result because I had tried everything else and I thought maybe with Atkins like okay I mean, you know, the first time around I tried it my my body was shocked into losing weight but this time around it, it sort of kind of knows my bag of tricks in a way sort of I don't know if that's even like real you know, body doesn't know anything but anyway it wasn't responding to the same stimuli. And I thought, okay, maybe that train has left the station for me, for that case. Maybe you only, maybe you only get one shot. Uh, but what the heck, I got nothing to lose. It's not going to be difficult for me because I've been, you know, I've been doing diets forever. I can go without certain stuff. It doesn't matter, you know, it doesn't matter. Of course I'll try it. So I decided to try it. So Dukan, you can look it up. I'm not going to give you, like, the whole contents. You'll, you'll read it. It's going to be better for you if you just, you know, read it on a website or something. Oh, excuse me, it's late. Yeah, it's one o'clock in the morning. Um, and uh, it consists uh, of several phases. One phase, well, phase one is attack, where for like 10 days you eat nothing but proteins. Uh, like lean meats, fat-free cottage cheese, fish, eggs. That's it. So I did that, and I lost three pounds. Suddenly I was at 182, and I was like, whoa, I don't remember seeing these figures these numbers on a, on a scale, like, ever, <laughs> for, not for a very long time, anyway. And then phase two is where you alternate, you you do one protein day, and then um, the next day you do protein plus veggies, not, not, obviously not including, like, beets and potatoes and carrots for sugar and starch, but uh, cucumbers, tomatoes, squash, this kind of thing, you can, you can have whatever you want. Again, the quantity is not limited, so you alternate, you know, one protein day, another protein plus vegetable day, and I start and I continue to lose weight, and I lost more, and I lost more, and I lost more, and in four weeks, and today I think today is four weeks to the day that I've been on this diet, I lost nine and a half pounds. I'm at one eight seventy six. I'm at one seventy six. It's unbelievable. I've been losing on average two pounds a week. I don't think I will, I I don't remember ever being in a better shape. Then right now, here's a picture again. Before and after, you can see it. Again, this was taken today. I, I'm not used to seeing this in the mirror. I'm freaking excited. I, you know, I, I, I certainly didn't expect results like this. So I'm very, very excited about it. And I'm quite pleased with myself. And I think deservedly so. Um, again, I can do 12 chin ups. What? 12 chin ups? Are you crazy? Are you kidding me? No, you're not kidding me. I can do 12. And I'm going to do more. Maybe next week I'm going to do 13. And then I'm going to go... You know, my, my goal is to go to 14 before the end of the summer. So I'm staying on this diet for at least another four weeks. Because I got, I got time, you know. I'm going to be going on another overseas trip in the beginning of September. The first week of September. So before then... But even even then, I, I'm, I'm probably going to be able to stay on it. It's fairly simple. Um... So yeah, I'm going to stay on it for at least another four weeks. Let's see what it gets me. I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm going to continue to lose weight. I don't know how far down I'm going to go, but... You know, where, where I'm at today is pretty exciting as it is. So, in total, I've lost... 
you know, around 52 pounds, and it didn't take, you know, didn't happen overnight, but it can be done. What I'm seeing in the mirror every time, uh, you know, th these days, this is this is new to me. This is, you know, this is unexpected. So I think if, if my body can accomplish this, and my body is horrible because, uh, you know, I will forever have to watch what I eat. I don't know. I do not believe that after the uh, the diet that I'm on right now, I'm going to be able to, as the diet promises, eat whatever I want. I don't think so. I think I should. I I will have to watch what I eat for the rest of my life, which is fine because whenever I you know, every time I start indiscriminately eat stuff, I explode. My body just balloons. I I, you know, I don't want that. I like what I have now. I'm back to my 32 inch waist pants and they feel great. <laughs> They're very comfortable. They're not tight. So I'm good. Uh, like I, I know I got more extra fat to burn, obviously. And I can feel, I know where it is, but I'm slimming down almost visibly, like almost on the, you know, like every few days kind of basis where I see, oh my God, is this me? Like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> Funny things people do, right? But when, when you know, I walk up to a mirror, and in order to make myself look better to myself, I, you know, like I suck in my 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 gut a little bit just to make it look a little slimmer. So these days, I walk up to a mirror, I look at the gut, and say, "Am I am I am I sucking my gut in? No, I'm not. I'm not. It's just not there anymore. It's unbelievable. It all happened in four weeks. Four weeks brought dramatic." dramatic change so anyway uh, if you're interested again Google Dukan D-U-K-A-N um, I highly recommend interval training I highly recommend kettlebell for anyone looking for muscle definition and muscle tone especially in the core um, it's worked wonders for me and I, I was never an athlete I'm not an athlete I, I don't know shit about like training and stuff uh, but a colleague of mine uh, um, I told him about Kettlebell, and he got himself one, and he's ecstatic about it. He says it's it's unbelievable. It's the best. It's like it's the best investment in fitness he's ever made. Only you know, thirty five pounds for him is a little a little too light. I, he went for like twenty four kilos, which would be I don't know, like up to two pounds or something. Um, well, good luck to him. And again, the kind the kind of exercise you do with the Kettlebell, uh, if you go to YouTube and you search for six-minute kettlebell workout, I'm pretty sure the very first thing that comes up uh, is a six-minute workout that I'm copying almost entirely mine on. Um, so you do one-arm swings, you do two-arm swings, you do like squats, you do high pulls like this, you know, from, from almost near the floor to up here. Um, all sorts of things you can do, but again, your entire body and most of your core is participating and moving and stopping that thing which just swings around you violently you know, 35 pounds of cast iron or something um, it's a powerful thing and interval training the Tabata intervals are a powerful powerful thing um, in fact when you're doing that a good way to tell a good way to tell that you're exerting yourself to a sufficient degree is when well, when I was like breaking through, like expanding or rather lengthening my workout, every time in the beginning, every time I would add another minute or two, by the end of it, I would feel slightly nauseated. That's how intense the body was working. That's how hard the body was working. That is a sign to me that you're exerting yourself to the you know, sufficient degree. Uh, that's an indication. Um, I wasn't throwing up or anything, but I could feel uneasy a little bit. That's how hard. Uh, you you know I, I got my body to work. That's again that's a sign that you're you're in the right kind of zone. Eventually that goes away because your body trains. But you want to get to that the line, the border of your comfort zone. Anyway, I lost 52 pounds on low carb diets. Uh, what I'm on right now is low carb, low fat diet, high protein. Um, it is not unhealthy. In fact, it was unhealthy to have all that fat and walk around with that. It is safe. It can be done. I think my metabolism is one of the most stubborn. And yet, even that 
you know, even my metabolism capitulated uh, before this diet. So it can be done. You can do it. All it takes is knowledge. You need to know what you're doing. Uh, and I, I really don't have to tell you that you need motivation because if you're not motivated, nothing's going to happen. Obviously, anyway, if you if you value the ability to eat delicious foods over the ability to fit into those slim pants or whatever, then you're going to get what you value, probably. But, like, uh, I, I know very clearly, for me, sugar is the enemy, and everything that turns into sugar is the enemy, by proxy. So, uh, and another thing, I was, I was watching a video by Kidotech, uh, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing your, your YouTube handle, he's attacking his, you know, uh, weight problem, uh, he's fighting very hard, uh, a word of advice if you compromise on low carb, it's, there's not going to be a result. You need to be uncompromising. You need to be really, really hard on that. You know, keep a very hard line. Like, do not make excuses. Just go full bore for a while. If you're going to go like get a genetic diet uh, for a while, you don't have to go for a very long time, but go for a few weeks. Um, do not make excuses. Do, no, do not eat chips and salsa. Just do not. If you're going to eat any carbs, eat like green vegetables. Okay, not tomatoes even. Green vegetables. Things that taste sweet, taste sweet because they have sugars in them. Okay, so anything that tastes even remotely sweet, you want to stay away. No, no fruit, especially no fruit juice. Um, please do try to 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 like come in under 10, 15 grams of carbs a day for at least a few weeks if you want to lose that weight. You, you know, half measures really don't work here. At least not in my experience. Maybe your body works differently. If that's the case, then all the power to you. Uh, but I would, I would recommend, again, if the weight is not going away, persist. And be careful. Again, watch your, your ketone levels. Um, drink lots of water. Take vitamin supplements. But do persist for at least a while. Um, I just thought, I just, I just had this thought. I'm probably gonna get a lot of you know, like harshly negative comments about the Atkins diet. You know what? Don't bother. Uh, Atkins diet is controversial. It's worked for me. Oh, the other important thing was when I went and had that doctor's visit, when he told me that I need to lose weight, my blood sugar was borderline high. I don't know the units of measurement, but I think like a hundred, starting with a hundred is high, and I was at ninety nine. And also my cholesterol numbers were all wrong. My good cholesterol was way too low. My bad cholesterol was way too high. Six months later, six months later, that you know, which included like four months of hardcore Atkins, I went to that doctor again. My blood work came back perfect. My good cholesterol from being very low it came up like 11%, 11 percent, 11 percentage point. Uh, like from like 35 to 46, something like that. My, um, I'm not even sure that that was percentage point, but I do remember 35 and 46. My bad cholesterol was way down. My blood sugar was way down. He said literally it was perfect. Okay. Uh, so yeah, glucose, blood glucose is important. I think it drives a lot of the processes in your body. And it seems that, uh, in my case, successfully attacking blood glucose has helped me to defeat all that extra fat. Um, that's it.